right, hello. These are my STEM resources for module four. So first is my book. I chose the Mercury 13. And um, this tells the story of 13 women who had gone through training um, at the Lovelace Foundation uh, during the space race with uh, the USSR. Um, however, they were never sent into space. They had amazing careers despite that. Um, and it tells their story um, of kind of what they went through, as well as their contributions that they made after the fact. Um, it was just kind of infuriating, like just reading even the first couple chapters, because um, the USSR sent a woman into space in 1963, but um, the US didn't send a woman to space for 20 years when they sent Sally Ride. So in the foreword, it talks a lot about that. And just kind of the reasoning behind why they wanted to try to um, think about testing women and putting them into space. Um, and it just seems like a very interesting book. So I'm excited to read more about it as soon as I get out of school on Friday. Um, I chose it because I have a young readers version of it in my classroom called Almost Astronauts that a few of my students had read this year and were really interested in the story. Um, so that kind of spurred my interest in wanting to know more about these women. And I think that's the reason why I chose this, because I think that uh, bringing light to the stories of minorities and women in STEM is so important and it's something we definitely need to do. So next is my movie. Um, I chose The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. I definitely like the book better than the movie, but I read the book first. Um, the movie is super powerful. Um, it tells the story of Henrietta Lacks, who was an African-American woman whose uh, cells were taken from her. She had cervical cancer um, and was being treated at Johns Hopkins, and they took her cells without her knowledge. Her cells have been utilized in a lot of modern medicine, and um, we have her to thank for a lot of things that we have today, um, but most of us don't even know who she is, and it's just a very powerful story. The movie was, um, it it told the story from a different perspective in my mind. Um, I think the book was better. It gave a lot more information, but I like Oprah Winfrey as an actress. And I think um, it still was powerful and in a way just kind of like brought about the main message of this, of the book, I guess you could say. Um, and I think the reason why I chose it is because first of all, I think it's important that we need to know about these people who have made huge contributions, whether or not they choose to or not, um, into our modern medicine and fields. And that, you know, here is another minority story that needs to be brought to the forefront and understood and just the sacrifices that people have made. So definitely something to check out. Next is my podcast. I don't really listen to a lot of podcasts. I didn't even know I had an app on my phone for podcasts. Um, I have a four-year-old son, so I my time for podcasting is um, limited. So when I was looking and searching for a podcast, I found the 60-second um, Science by Scientific American. I thought this would be a really uh, great one because it's short and sweet. Most of them are only a few minutes long. Even though it says it's 60 seconds, most are like two or three minutes. Um and I like this. I, the reason why I chose it is because I think um, even little snippets and gathering information like this helps me to become more scientifically literate. And I think that's important for um, anyone in modern society to better understand science and the contributions that it's made to our uh, modern society and the things that it's hopefully helping us to avoid in the future and things like that. Um, so the one that I chose to focus on is about bird beaks. And the reason why I chose that is because last week I had done a lesson analysis on a bird beaks lesson and how they're adapted based on 
the diet of the bird. Well, this podcast kind of proved that wrong, which um, it's saying they evolve for other reasons. They use their beak kind of like their hands. So um, they've evolved for nest construction. They've also evolved because of the way certain birds sing. Um, they're also used for thermoregulation. There's lots and lots of different ways and reasons why bird beaks have evolved. So it was very interesting and only took me two or three minutes to learn that. And I think that kind of led me to like, oh, wow, podcasts are kind of interesting because it's a way to gather information pretty quickly. And um, it also kind of instilled in me just this like need to be flexible and understand that I don't know everything and that there's constantly things to learn, but you have to be curious and willing to learn them. And last but not least is my place. I picked the Nag Planetarium, which is um, part of the Reading Public Museum, which is close to my ho- house. Um, and the reason why I picked the planetarium is for a few reasons. First, I think um, planetariums are great places for um, public science education. Um, there are I feel like it's an accessible place for lots of different ages. Um, There's different programs for preschool kids all the way up to adults to learn about our earth and the, you know, space as well as astronomy. And I think ultimately to go back to what I said earlier, like just trying to create a society that's more scientifically literate, a planetarium is a great place to start. So that's why I chose the planetarium. So those are my four resources. I hope you learning about them.